Hi everyone, my name is Miss Megan and I am with the Holbert Branch Library. Today I'm going to read another middle grade story to you and this one is called Star Crossed by Barbara D. The story is about a girl named Maddie who isn't invited to a Halloween party thrown by a popular girl. Her friends decide to help her dress up in a costume so that way she can sneak in. She is dressed up as Darth Vader and at the party she meets a girl named Gemma who she decides she might actually have more feelings for her than she thought. So I'm going to read chapter four to you and this is at the Halloween party. On Saturday night mom drove me right to the Kaplan front door which was decorated with a giant cobweb spelling welcome. I hadn't mentioned to her that I wasn't in fact welcome. It wasn't the kind of information I'd been sharing with her lately. But anyway what would be the point? She just tell me I shouldn't go and I knew that already. Pick you up at 10, she said as I got out the car. How about 9.30, Darth Vader whispered. Really? Mom looked surprised. Well, sure, Maddie, if you want. Call me if you change your mind. I watched her drive off. Then I Vader marched into the house and downstairs to the basement, which was where Willow had her parties. Right away, I spotted Tessa flirting with Liam Harrison, who'd come dressed as Thor. Uh-oh, I thought. Liam was the vote-getter for cutest boy. He was nice enough, I guess, but conceited. I couldn't figure out what Tessa saw in him other than the extreme cuteness. Oh, and the fact that Willow made no secret about liking him. But maybe those two things were enough for Tessa, who could really, who could be really competitive. Unfortunately, Lucy, Tinkerbell, was standing nearby keeping an eye on her while chatting with Keisha Bromley, a jellyfish, a squid, some sort of mutant combination. She was in black with black envelopes stuck randomly all over her body. Oh, okay. Got it. Blackmail. I almost coughed, but of course, Darth Vader never coughs, so I turned it into a choky cough. Suddenly, Lucy looked right at me. Then Tessa must have said something really funny, and the four of them, Lucy, Tessa, Liam, and Keisha, started laughing. That was when I realized they had no idea who I was, and it felt a little creepy because Lucy and Tessa were closer to me than anyone else on the planet, closer than my family, almost. And here they were seeing me, but not knowing me. I almost ran over to them and pulled off the mask and yelled, hey, it's me guys, aren't you surprised? But of course, not being recognized was the whole point of this costume anyway. But anyway, I'd come here to see Elijah. I had left the room and wandered around a bit, finally spotting Elijah in the corner of the basement where the Kaplans kept their old stereo stuff. He was standing by himself checking his phone and he was wearing a suit and tie. Weird costume, I thought. Maybe he was supposed to be a senator or an undertaker? So we meet again, I boomed. The circle is complete. He looked up at me and grinned. Hey, cool, Ryan, right? No, wait, it's AJ. Or Jake? Your limited imagination arouses pity, rebel scum. Elijah laughed. He really does have a great laugh. I couldn't help thinking, dude, that's so awesome. You sound just like Darth Vader. Thank you. I'm glad your ears are functioning well today. My ears? Never mind. I see you're wearing a suit and tie. He shrugged, yeah, I couldn't think of a costume, so I'm Alfred. Who? You know, from Batman? Ah, uh, yes, the butler, of course. I know it's stupid. You don't need to rub it in, Jake. I'm not. Forget it, okay? He sighed. I don't know why I even came. I hate big parties. All these people we never hang out with at school. I wheezed. Some of the girls look pretty good, though, right? In their costumes? Yeah, I guess. I hadn't noticed. 
Elijah's dark eyes, dark eyebrows rose, hopefully. You want to get out of here? Get some pizza? Play some Xbox or something? Me? No, I can't. I mean, I would, but I told my mom. Hey, you're not Jake. Elijah got up closer to my face. So close I could smell the pizza on his breath. Okay, who are you? I'm your father, I said quickly. So there's pizza where? Exercise room, but you'll have to take off the mask to eat pizza. All of a sudden he grabbed the edges of my helmet as if he wanted to yank it off. It's AJ, right? Unhun me, rebel swine. I thundered, you don't know the power of the dark side. I jerked backward and turned away from him, swishing my cape. As I did this move, it occurred to me I didn't remember if Darth Vader actually did any cape swishing, but what was the point of having a black cape if you didn't use it for emphasis? Then I marched away in purposeful Vader steps. What had I just accomplished? Yes, I'd proven that Elijah's ears worked fine, which meant that when he hadn't heard me in the library, he was just being a dirt bag. On the other hand, he seemed kind of sweet just now. Awkward about costumes, awkward about the party. We had more in common than I realized. Although, what did it mean that he hadn't noticed any of the girls at the party? Was that a good sign or a bad one? I desperately needed to talk to Lucy, except now I couldn't find her, or Tessa, either for that matter. Where are they? I searched the crowd of kids I'd known for the last 13 years, barely any different under makeup and masks, but Tessa had a few girls, Tessa and a few girls had made their own costumes. Willow, Queen of Hearts, Charlotte and Isabel, a pair of dice, Keisha, a jellyfish squid, most. Most of the other girls were wearing costumes to make themselves look cute. Wonder Woman, Ray, Supergirl, but besides Liam Thor, Nolan Pike, Rubik's Cube, Bennett Park, Captain America, and Elijah, the majority of the boys had just thrown on a football jersey or drawn on their faces with Sharpies, mess up their shirts with ketchup and jelly and, sta and staggered around like zombies. Why had I tried so hard to be clever with all my book characters? Tessa was right. I definitely ever thought the whole costume thing. All I need, needed was this Vader mask and a cape, and I could avoid humiliation for the last few Halloweens. For a smart girl, I could really be dumb when it comes to certain topics. Hey, Darth Vader, Willow said, doing a stuck-up Queen of Hearts smile as she walked over to greet me. She used white makeup on her face. Her lips and cheeks were cherry red. Nice costume. It's not a costume, I thundered. She laughed. Of course not. Say a line from Star Wars. Your thoughts betray you. Your feelings are strong, especially for your sister. So you have a twin sister? Ha ha, that's great. Say something else. By then I was running out of Vaderisms, so I went for the... So I went for the obvious. The force is strong with this one. Charlotte, Isabel, Keisha, and a few other kids walked over. Isabel was popping candy corn into her mouth. Who's Darth Vader? I think it's Elijah, Charlotte said. No, Elijah's wearing his bar mitzvah you suit. Isabella giggled. It's not, it's not his bar mitzvah suit. I boomed. Elijah's Alfred from Batman. Yeah, he would be, Charlotte said. She squinted at me. It's Jake then, right? Negative, I said. Willow poked under my shoulder with her scepter. All right, Darth Vader, as your queen, I command you, reveal your true identity. This is my party, and I demand to know. Under the mask, I could feel sweat dripping down my neck. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Now, if you will, excuse me. I take my leave. The Emperor waits. I did the cape swish again and walked away fast. Fortunately, there was a bathroom in Willow's basement. I ducked inside and locked the door and took off the mask. Oxygen. Yay. Then I splashed some cold water on my sweaty face. A minute later, someone banged on the door hard. And then four more times. 
and then kicked it. I was about to protest and I remembered the voice changer just in time. Pulling on my mask, I roared, stand back, I now approach. I unlocked the door and it was AJ Vendeth, an obnoxious boy with pug dog eyes who probably trash talked his own grandma. He was, he had a pizza smears down his, he had pizza smears down the front of his football jersey, which meant he'd either come as a zombie or was just a, a, a disgusting eater. Knowing him, probably both. Sorry, he murmured. I thought it was somebody else in there. Mad purple hued molt worms, I said. What? Bathroom zero's space junk. He scowled as he shut the door behind him. I checked my phone again. Now it was 8.15. That meant I'd be stuck here for another hour and 15 minutes. Seven, 75 minutes of swishing my cape and running away from people who wanted to know who I was. I'd already had a conversation with Elijah, so there didn't seem to be much of a point to, in hanging around. But if I called my mom to pick me up now, she'd ask what had happened and where were Tessa and Lucy, and shouldn't we carpool because we always did. I walked past the stereo corner. Someone turned up the music really loud, and now I could see Tessa hopping around, her arms flailing. Liam was dancing too, not with Tessa exactly, but he was definitely part of a girl's circle surrounding him. Lucy was dancing with Bennett Park. Bennett Park. She didn't appear to still be on Tessa duty, but maybe acting like she was having fun was a part of her surveillance technique. Anyway, it was fun to watch her. All her years of ballet and tap made Lucy an incredible dancer. Too bad I can't join them, I thought. And what was I supposed to do for more than an hour? If I couldn't dance, I couldn't eat pizza, I couldn't even talk to people. Maybe AJ was out of the bathroom by now. If he was, I could lock myself in until 9.29. If only I'd thought, if only I'd brought a book with me, I sighed. The voice changer wheezed, and then I thought, what if I snuck upstairs to the kitchen and found a straw? At least I'd be able to sip some water through my mask. Willow's parents had firm rules for her parties. They'd come downstairs every 10 to 15 minutes to check on us, and we weren't allowed upstairs for any reason, but I'd be quick. It was really kind of an emergency situation. With all the sweating, I was desperately thirsty, and Willow's parents were a pretty big deal in our town. They wouldn't want negative publicity. Party girl banned from kitchen parishes from mask-induced dehydration. I wanted, I waited for a super loud song to make my move, and then tiptoed upstairs. Once bashing into the, once almost bashing into the banister with my lightsaber, the Kaplan's huge white kitchen was empty except for someone getting ice cubes from the freezer it was a girl okay so that was chapter four of star cross i hope you guys enjoyed it if you guys are interested you can definitely get this book here at the library and if you guys have anything you'd like to share you can send it to us at lcpl oh i'm sorry kids at lcplin.org Again, it's K-I-D-S at L-C-P-L-I-N dot org. And also, if you haven't already, please make sure that you sign up for summer reading. It goes until the end of July, and you can earn some amazing prizes um, or possibly win amazing prizes if you uh, read a certain amount and if we pull your raffle ticket. So, yeah, have a good one, guys. Thanks for joining.